Hi there, this is an update video to show you the changes in release 2 of KDP Wizard. So some new features, some fixes that we've made, and some general all-round improvements. Uh, the tool is still going to be 100% free whilst it's in beta. And we're aiming to do another release, which will be release free in the next couple of weeks. And then after that, we'll be launching it as a fully-fledged product. And there will be a free tier and paid plans on that as well. Okay, let's get into the changes. So when you first open the app after the update, you'll get a warning like this to say that KDP Wizard Beta has been updated to release 2 and you need to take a fresh copy of the updated template base. So I know these things are unpopular, but we have had to make quite a lot of base changes and that was always the intention during the beta phase. So just need to go here and copy base again. I've done that already and copied it to this July 3rd base here. And then go help API documentation and add this base to KDP wizard. Okay, that's that. that's done. And then I can go back. In fact, I'm gonna to need to refresh this page and select the July 3rd option. That message will disappear as well now that we've done that and the base is compatible with the latest version of the app. Okay, so let's have a look and see what's changed in the base structure. So we'll only run through the major items and this is the old one, this is the new one. And I think one of the main things in the products table is that we used to push everything up to this keyword set table and then link to that and that resulted in a lot of records for you guys. So uh, it was done like this with lookups to the keyword sets. Instead of doing that, um, we now just push up the keywords as individual text fields. So that'll mean less records cluttering up your base, but we do still have the ability to have keyword profiles. So there's a sample one or two in here where you can give it a name and you can go forward and say which of these keywords you're gonna put in. So you can enter them in here or you can enter them in the app as well. Okay, other big changes in the products table, uh, I think are around the primary marketplace and what we can do there now. So we have the primary marketplace being populated, the price being brought in, as well as the currency and the BSR and the number of reviews, and the average review rating and the primary rating as well. So we'll see those being populated once you've done a push. And in case anybody is wondering, we have this primary BSR set as a dollar amount, so it shows the commas in between the numbers better. It just makes it easier to understand. Okay, so onto the app itself. We have a look at the pop-up. We've got a couple of extra filters now, so we can filter by status. So we just want to see our draft books or just our live ones, etc. And the other thing you can do is set the data source. So we have this in Merch Wizard, and you can say whether you want it to be your live products, or if you want to take from these other two tables, new products and scalar. So new products is like the new listings table in Merch Wizard. You put in there the book information, the title, subtitle, all the information that you want, and then you can just list them quickly and easily by using the pop-up on the listing pages. The scalar functionality is similar, except obviously this is something where you can scale your listing data using variables and formulas. And we're trying to make that as easy as possible. So you can just go through and list a set of journals or a set of books as efficiently as possible. Okay, so moving on to the changes that we've made to the listing pages. we just create a new listing up there and I'm going to go and edit the details page of this first one here. If we just want to do a quick copy of an existing book's details, we can click the copy button here, and then we can go to the new book and just hit paste. And we'll see that's pasted in the relevant information here and below. And we get this copy and paste functionality on the details page, the content page, and the pricing page. So pretty useful if you just want to do a quick copy between books. Okay, so let's have a look at what else has changed on the details page. So we've got a new page here, and if we just go down, you've got your usual author stuff on here, so we can pick one of those. We've got contributors, so we can select multiple of those and drop those in. And something new that we've added is this description rich text editor, which overlays the KDP native text box. So we can type in here, this is the best planner ever. 
and we can put in some bullets. So exciting bullet one and oops, except bullet two. We can put in bold, you can make things italic. And we've tried to stick to the tags that are supported for KDP. So in theory, all these things are supported. And now that we've got a description in here, we can choose to save it to our description profiles if we wanted to. So I can enter in here, uh, best planner description. I'm gonna hit save, and that's gonna populate in our description profiles table in our base. Okay. And then when I come back in here, it's available in our drop down as well. So we can change between the sample and the best planner one. And if you say, do you know what? I actually want to delete that one. You can delete it and it removes it from your base as well. You can update the sample one if you wish. You just uh, can build upon it. So this is a bold test bullet point number one. You can just save that, which will update the HTML in your base. And you'll see the profile management pattern repeated in a number of places in the app. So you're able to maintain descriptions here. You're also able to maintain your keyword profiles in here as well. And you can do it either on the page here or you can do it in the Airtable base itself. Okay, let's have a look at keywords. So keywords, you can search for your profile and just say, right, this is my Flamingo profile. I'm gonna put those keywords in. Obviously, if you had seven sets of keywords, it would bring those in as well. But we just got a few here that we're testing with. And again, you can update these. We can add in a third set of keywords here and save that to our planner profile and that will update in our keyword profiles. So moving on to our categories dropdown, we've made quite a few changes here and we hope you enjoy the improvements. The first one is that we've improved the speed dramatically. So if I type in soccer in here, we'll see that it's almost instantaneous. Let me select soccer now. And then if I type in football, as it is over in the UK, select football as well. We'll see that this guy is busy over here as well. And that's because we've made changes with our drop down to make it compatible with the native categories tree view selector. So you can use either the native tree view selector or you can use our drop down. And similarly, you can remove, if we remove football from here and hit save, it's going to keep these in sync. So it's got just soccer on there, it's got soccer in here as well so you can use either or, or mix and match that's entirely up to you so on the pricing page we've made some changes where you can now see some reminders of which book it is that you're actually listing so if you've got multiple tabs it can be a little bit confusing to remember which one's which so we're bringing the title subtitle author and a thumbnail of the actual cover so then down here we've got our pricing profile and if i just expand out the other marketplaces Similar to as it was in release one, you can now pick and populate your pre-configured pricing and you can change that directly here on the page and say, right, I'm going to make that 19.99. I want to update that for my eight by tens and that will have updated an air table and you can just enter a new profile in here and amend it as you see fit and save that one. Again, that will save in pricing profiles. So you can manage it in Airtable or you can manage it on screen Okay, so the final thing to show you is some of the updates in the general options that we've got. So we've got hide KDP menu, which hides a menu on the bookshelf page. Use the sticky header on the bookshelf page, which means that it stays, the KDP wizard menu stays visible as you scroll up and down the page. We've got the disable category search functionality. So if you prefer to use the native tree view search, you can use that instead. We've got the disable description rich text editor. So in case you're using other tools or for whatever reason you don't like the rich text editor, you can just tick that box to disable it. And then we've got some options around whether we will be creating interior records in Airtable. For some people, they definitely want that. Some people, they don't. And the same for covers. The other thing we've got here is a default cover upload mode. So if you're one that always uploads your own, you'll want to select upload my own here and then you can go on to and then when you load the content page, it will auto select the upload my own option. If you're a cover creator type of person, then you would want to select the cover creator option here and, and have it default to that. Okay, so we hope you enjoy the release to KDP wizard beta. 
If you've got any feedback for us, you can use the buttons on the page here to give feedback in the Facebook group or to report a bug. Just click on those and file away. Okay, we hope you enjoy it. Thanks very much.